TEPCO says the former head of the Fukushima Daiichi plant has been diagnosed with esophageal cancer. According to the utility, doctors say it's very unlikely his disease was caused by radiation exposure. Masao Yoshida has led the efforts to stabilize the plant after the nuclear accident in March. The company relieved him from his post last week. Water contaminated with radioactive materials is building up inside the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Underground water has been seeping into the facility's basements. Tokyo Electric Power Company says storage tanks will be full by March. The utility considered treating the water and then releasing it into the sea, but strong opposition from the fishing industry forced it to postpone the decision. Farmers in a coastal area hit by the March tsunami will build Japan's largest facility for growing vegetables without soil. The tsunami's seawater ruined one-third of farmland or about 1,800 hectares in the Sendai region. Farmers and agricultural corporations in the area plan to build a facility that uses liquid nutrients in water instead of soil. They hope to start operations in 2013. Government officials in Fukushima have released some statistics people have been waiting for. For the first time, residents of some towns near the Fukushima Daiichi plant found out how much radiation they faced. Government officials are in the process of giving health checkups to all 2 million residents. They released the estimated external exposure levels of about 1,700 people from three municipalities designated as evacuation zones after the accident. The results do not include those working at the plant. They show some people were exposed to up to 15 millisieverts of radiation in the four months after the nuclear accident. The country's permissible exposure limit is one millisievert per year. 98% of those tested are estimated to have been exposed to less than five millisieverts. Since the March 11th accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, people in northeastern Japan and elsewhere have grown increasingly worried about radiation. Now, a radiation detector that speaks has been developed to help people who are visually impaired. Zero, ten, if you push this button on this uh, 12 by 5 centimeter decimeter, a woman's voice tells you the amount of airborne radiation per hour. A prototype of the speaking decimeter was shown to the public in Fukushima City on Friday. The device was jointly developed by a professional association for the visually impaired and a local company. The machine will be handy for the visually impaired. We hope people will find it useful. One visually impaired couple who evacuated from a town near the power plant said they were worried about radioactive contamination. We already feel safer with this device. Japan says it could ease restrictions on U.S. beef imposed eight years ago due to concerns over BSC or mad cow disease. The move was prompted by a worldwide plunge of BSC cases, including in the United States. Japan banned imports of all U.S. beef in 2003 after a case of mad cow disease was detected in the United States. Since 2005, imports are limited to meat from cattle aged 20 months or younger after complete removal of the brain and spinal cords. Pathogens at, that cause BSC are known to accumulate in these body parts. On Friday, the Health Ministry asked the Food Safety Commission to discuss how far restrictions can be eased without compromising safety. The focus of discussions will be on raising the upper age limit of cattle from 20 to 30 months in line with international standards. The move is prompting mixed reactions in Japan. <laughs> a restaurant owner welcomed the initiative, saying the meat will taste a lot better if the age limit is raised. The picture is quite different within the Japanese beef industry. Producers are worried that better quality imports will make it more difficult to compete on the domestic market. The Food Safety Commission will produce a report by mid-2012.